Dynamic posture deals with the postures of lying, sitting, and standing. Their variation medium or low as vision demands. Dynamic posture, especially walking on more difficult places such as slippery surfaces. Safety and balance. Dynamic posture is used in jumping upward, jumping forward, in hopping, skipping, or leaping. Dynamic posture is employed in stooping forward in the crouch to lift an object from the floor in this position or in this. and in sweeping or in pushing or pulling furniture. Falls are usually backward and dangerous, but the fall of dynamic posture is forward with a crouch and roll, and so is much safer. In the evolution of posture, man has risen from the horizontal position through the crouch to the vertical or erect standing position. But some individuals have gone on to a hyperextended standing position, while others have slumped back into a slouch. Let us again resume the balanced, erect, relaxed position, which is ideal. Again, let us rise from the all fours position through the various degrees of crouch to the erect standing position. For the basic dynamic position, or the position for action, is the crouch ranging from the high to the medium to the low crouch, extended forward to the position of quick getaway for the track runner or the football player, or reversed through the low to the medium to the high crouch and to the erect standing position. Fore and aft balance with the feet together and the body erect is limited to a range of a few inches but this can be extended considerably by advancing one foot and by assuming the crouch, as a boxer will do. Side-to-side -side balance is likewise limited to a few inches with the feet together and the body erect. Likewise, may be extended by separating the feet, even more so by assuming a crouch and turning the body, as a skier will do in stimming. It is difficult to reach and rise from a low chair. Sitting in a low chair, there's also more flexion of the knees, hip, and trunk, with the weight concentrated on the buttocks and coccyx, a source of the painful coccyx. A medium chair is better, but not ideal, and there is a tendency to slouch, whereas a shallow chair does not support the, th the thighs well. It is much easier to get in than to arise from a chair of proper height and depth. It supports the thighs and trunk well and makes it much easier to sit in a comfortably erect and balanced position, especially if the back is appropriately shaped. Usually the most comfortable chair is an armchair of suitable height and depth with a well-shaped back. Its firm seat and strong arms, properly placed and shaped, make it easy to get into and out of such a chair, either by using the arms for support or with dynamic posture, shoulders forward, heels back. The worst chair is usually the lounge chair seen in the living room or waiting room. Too low, too deep, and too soft. It is impossible to sit erect in such a chair or even to be comfortable in any position for very long. The usual tendency in sitting is promptly to go off balance with the center of gravity well back of the heels, striking the chair seat heavily or supporting the weight with the hands on the thighs or the arms of the chair. In arising from the chair by this method, it is difficult to get the weight far enough forward and again, the support of the arms is usually required, especially with a heavy person. 
By contrast, sitting with a good dynamic posture is done by lowering the trunk straight down over the feet in a crouch until the hips are level with the chair seat, then sliding gently back into the chair. In the close-up, we see better the poor balance in the usual manner of sitting and arising, contrasted with the foot and leg action of good balance in true dynamic posture. With this method, the weight can actually be catapulted forward if one is in a hurry to move ahead by thrusting the shoulders forward and tucking the heels back in a quick, synchronized movement. This action is seen much better in slow motion at one-third normal speed. Sitting at a table or desk is often done with an improper chair. A low chair makes it difficult to reach up to the table and distorts the posture, whereas a chair of proper size makes it much easier and less fatiguing. A high chair requires slumping down to the desk and is awkward for the legs. The flat top desk causes with neck tension and fatigue, whereas the tilted desk or table with the proper chair and good lighting is the ideal combination as we see here. Walking is commonly done with the weight back on the heels and the body erect, with quite a jolt as the weight comes down on each foot. This is apt to be aggravated by the pump during pregnancy. Walking with a slight crouch is far easier. The gait is, gait is softer and gentler. Running or walking with a rapid gait or stride can be accomplished with a further forward leaning. In slow motion, we see again the weight back on the heels in the usual erect position because of the pompous attitude often assumed by some persons and almost unavoidably during pregnancy. With the weight tilted forward, However, and a slight crouch, the movement becomes far simpler, easier, more graceful, and less fatiguing. This is the position of good dynamic posture. We see the reciprocal action of the arms and legs as well. In walking vigorously and forcefully, the body is tipped forward in a medium crouch. There is a little bit more up and down movement in the body because of the greater thrust of the legs. Walking forth and back and pivoting in the turn, we see the reciprocal movements of alternate legs. Pivoting or turning on one side is accomplished on the ball of the foot or possibly on the heel. In slow motion, we see in walking forward the reciprocal swing of the arm and leg, the movements of the ankles, knees, and hips, and the action of the muscles. The muscles contract only for a moment, whereas they are relaxed during most of the phase of walking. Pivoting is done on the ball of the foot and making a right angle turn. In zigzagging, it is common to swing the body from the feet upward, which is awkward, somewhat stiff, and not very efficient, and apt to be slow in the turns. This is what we often see in a person walking along a crowded street, trying to avoid crashing into other people. But if the movements are made from the shoulder, as a skier would do in making the turns, leading with the shoulder and hip and pivoting on the foot, the movements are far smoother. Walking on tiptoe, the weight is on the ball of the foot with strong action in the ankles. Walking backwards, we see a reversal of the usual gait. Walking on the heels, the weight comes down hard on the heels, and the toes are strongly flexed. Walking on a slippery surface is commonly done with the weight back on the heels, with a fall much more likely. It should be done with the weight forward in the crouched position. Running is done with the weight forward, the crouch increasing with the rapidity of the movement. In slow motion, we can see the forward crouch position and the spring on the balls of the feet. 
With high heels, the spring is lost. There is no motion in the ankle joints. The weight comes down with a clump with each step. There is more wiggle, of course, in the hips. In running in high heels, since the weight is on the balls of the feet anyway, the movement is simpler than is walking with high heels, and there is some movement in the ankles. We can see the brief contraction in the muscles as the weight goes on the leg in running as well as in walking. Ordinarily, the weight is lifted up with each step and dropped down with each step. But in the dynamic position, the trunk remains level and the work is done with the knees. With two girls, we see one going up the steps in the usual posture, the other with dynamic posture. With one, we can see the body erect, the legs straight, the effort greater, the jolt greater. With the other, the body is relaxed, the knees flexed, the effort much less. Now, in slow motion, we can see better the action of the feet, knees, and hips the graceful, smooth, almost floating movement which occurs in the basic dynamic position in going up and in going down. Now in this close-up, we see the action of the knees, the ankles, and the hips, as well as the swing of the arms. The body is forward in the crouch. There is plenty of room for the foot on the steps. There is no jolt. The muscles act as springs, contract for a minimal time, and relax most of the time. Here we are with two steps again. Now from the front, we see in the erect position the jolt, the strain on the knees, the poor balance that comes in the erect position. Contrast that with the crouch position, walking or running down the steps. It's easier to place the feet sideways to get better placement on a narrow step safer whether walking or running. The person with dynamic posture is far safer with less effort and better balance. Here another factor is brought in, and that is the loss of almost all the motion in the ankle joints with high heels. The effort is put into the knees and hips instead. We can see that the ankles hardly move at all and that there is quite a jolt going down. In slow motion, we can see better the various factors in the gait and that the ankle motion is almost completely lost with the high heels. The spring and power of the ankle is lost too. The banister is sometimes used for support. Often the hand is placed at the level of the hip and therefore when one steps down, the arm goes behind and the body is pulled backwards. This is not a good use of the support of the hand for it increases rather than diminishes the effort and certainly increases the danger of falling. But if we use the crouch position with the hand far forward, the balance is much better, especially going downstairs and the hand can be of much assistance. With the body erect, the weight is too far back. The ladder is apt to be pulled off balance. The arms are too high. And in coming down, the weight comes down with a jolt. One can see the quiver in the muscles as this jolt occurs. Going up, if we put the hands low and the body in a crouch, the effort is much less, the balance better, the safety much greater, and the jolt is less in coming down. Coming down with the legs straight, we can see the jolt, the quiver in the muscles. In fact, we can almost see osteoarthritis developing before our eyes with this method of progression downward. The hands pull back. Instead, in the dynamic position with hands low, weight forward over the balls of the feet, the body in a crouch, the balance is good, the effort is minimal, and the safety is great, even at the top of the steps. Coming down, there is a minimal jolt with each step, and we do not see as much quiver in the muscles and the joints. The joints are better protected.
In stepping from obstacle to obstacle, such as logs or boulders, the tendency is to hold the weight back on the rear leg, thus throwing the body off balance, sometimes failing to make the reach. It is far simpler to lean forward in the crouch, shifting the weight forward over the front leg. With three obstacles, we see better the effect of holding back and trying to get across with the weight on the rear leg. Once more, if the body is forward in the crouch, the trunk leads with a leading foot. The effort is much less, the movement more effective and safer. And jumping with the legs straight, little can be accomplished. With the knees bent, much more is accomplished. The arms are of aid. Now in slow motion, we see the jump without the knees bent, the jump with the knees bent, which is far more effective, and finally bringing the arms into play. The complete effect of the crouch plus the synchronized arm movement. In jumping forward, the same principles apply. With the knees flexed, the jump is increased. With the arm swing, the jump is much increased. In slow motion, we see the jump with the legs bent in the crouch. With the arms brought into play, it is even more effective. In jumping upward with the whole body, or just with the legs, as in jumping rope, again, the crouch position is much more effective. In jumping forward with a simple leap, landing on both feet, again, the crouch is used. The weight of the body is thrust onto the forward leg. Next, we see the hurdle across the horse and the vault, first at regular speed and then in slow motion. Notice the coordination of the arm and leg movements, the springy landing with the body in the crouched position. In the close-up, we can see better in slow motion, first the hurdle and then the vault with the hand on the horse. Now in slow motion, we see the jump, rebalancing, standing erect, and then instead of jumping straight off the table, first stooping down to a low crouch in order to minimize the jolt and landing with a nice spring. In jumping onto the side of a swimming pool, one is apt to jump in this fashion. In order to sit down, the body is turned half circle, as we can see in slow motion, and then swung into a reverse turn to come down. Standing upon a chair or a stool, a woman is very apt to use something rickety like this, and we see the inevitable fall, often accompanied with more disastrous consequences than in this instance. In falling, one can stop the fall short or go a little further and stop the fall, or carry it on through to the floor. The fall can be forward, sideways, or backwards. In each instance, the body should not strike abruptly, but slide and minimize the blow in any one area. Here we see a forward fall finally carried to the floor. Then a backward fall, first caught short, then caught halfway, and finally the fall is carried through to the floor again in a crouch without letting the weight get out of control. If one has to fall, it is better to fall forward in a roll. Pushing furniture is often done with the body stiff, the work done with the arms, the body braced. It is much better to go into a crouch and let the weight of the body go with the movement and help the pushing. The arms doing much less of the work, the legs doing most of it. In opening and closing a door, the same principles apply. Instead of stiff arming the door like this, which is dangerous if someone comes from the other side, with the crouch and the arms flexed, it is possible to protect oneself as well as to use a minimum of effort. Picking up an object from the floor is commonly done with a forward movement. Actually, this takes three movements and requires shifting the weight onto the forward leg. It is much simpler to take a step backward because in so doing, only one movement is necessary and one quick coordinated movement brings one down to the floor. Lifting is often done, particularly by women, with the legs and arms straight and the work is done with the back. This is likely to strain the back and cause low backache. Instead, if one goes down in a crouch, letting the legs do the work with the arms flexed and simply supporting the weight the back strain is far less. Picking up books is often done with the legs straight. 
The balance then is poor, and one is apt to drop the object after straining the back and overloading the arms. Instead, it should be done as the weightlifters do it, in a crouch, with the knees apart, the body weight forward, the legs doing the work. The legs are far more capable of the job, and we have safety, efficiency, and lack of fatigue. In sweeping floors, the woman often stands with her body braced. The work is done with the arms from the shoulders. The effort is great and is apt to be fatiguing and ineffective, even causing bursitis. Instead, if the woman will use a crouch, swinging the body and using the legs with the work, then the effort is kept at a minimum, fatigue is reduced, and there is less likelihood of strain. The same principles apply with a brush as well as a broom. See how ineffective the movement is when the arms are thrust from the shoulders against the braced body. Whereas in a crouched position, with the body relaxed, the movement is far more effective, it is easier, more graceful, and less tiring. Often the effort is from the shoulder, the body stiff and braced, and conducive to bursitis. This too is tiring. Instead of the crouch, if the crouch is used and the body is relaxed and swings with the movement, the effort is less and the work is far more effective. Thus, good dynamic posture implies the use of the whole body in the simplest and most effective way, using muscle contraction and relaxation balance, coordination, rhythm, and timing to optimum advantage. The smooth integration of these elements of good dynamic posture results in performance which is easy as well as in the physical activity of the individual.